the humble Anzac biscuit is quite a remarkable one. It is something that we are quite familiar with. It's something we grew up eating, but for many of us, we haven't exactly known what that has to do with our Anzacs. What I find so fascinating about the story of the Anzac Biscuit is that 100 years since the landing at Gallipoli is that they are still a reminder of the love and dedication of the mothers, the wives, the sisters and the daughters of those soldiers who were fighting for king and nation on the other side of the world. Imagine the immense comfort they felt receiving a tin from home that contained a piece of kindness amongst the harsh reality of the situation around them. In 1915, the population of Australia was less than 5 million. Of that number, 416,000 men enlisted. 60,000 men were killed and 156,000 were wounded. We always talk about the soldiers that gave their lives, but we must also remember the grief and the loss that was suffered by the loved ones of the soldiers that were left behind. Modern Baking Company, formerly known as Unibic, is the first company to produce Anzac biscuits for commercial sale. The company went to great lengths to develop a recipe that had the taste and the crunchy texture that we have grown up with and love. In addition to this, a portion of the sales of these biscuits is given to the RSL to support ex-servicemen and their families. Each year since 2002, a series of commemorative tins has been released. Many of these have become a collector's item. These tins, although very elaborate and look nothing like the original tins which the Anzac biscuits were packaged in, were inspired by the original containers the homemade biscuits were sent in to the front line. So it is for this reason, on the 100 year anniversary that marks the Anzacs landing at Gallipoli, that I will be sharing a pre-1920s authentic Anzac recipe with you. I hope that you enjoy it. Welcome back to Raw for Live and our special commemorative Anzac episode in which I am going to be taking you through a pre-1920s authentic Anzac biscuit recipe. Now basically what does that mean pre-1920s, post-1920s? Well we've been going through and doing some research regarding the humble Anzac biscuit and we've come across some very interesting research by the culinary historian Alison Reynolds who has been researching the Anzac biscuit and we know that after 1920s the Anzac biscuit the way we know it actually has coconut or desiccated coconut which before the 1920s was not found in any of the recipes so because it is the 100 year centenary I wanted to say true to that recipe and I'm going to be showing you this recipe without coconut okay so let's go through our ingredient list basically what we have here is two cups of rolled oats one cup of plain flour in this case I'm using wholemeal flour and half a cup of raw sugar. Now, just to say, I usually do stick to, um, and those who watch me know that I always substitute flowers for paleo alternatives, but because this is an Anzac biscuit, I want to say true and authentic to it. So I am going to not be substituting anything. If you want to, feel free to do that. But in this case, like I said, I'm going and following a pre-1920s recipe. Okay, so the first thing, um, before we mix our dry ingredients, we also need... 125 grams of butter. We have two tablespoons plus, you can be quite generous with the golden syrup. And we also have one teaspoon of bicarbonate soda. Okay, so the first thing you want to be doing is putting, pre-setting your oven to 170 degrees Celsius. Um, considering that is a fan forced oven, Maybe give or take, if you've got, you know that you have a really strong oven, I would just maybe put it on 160. If you know you have a really weak oven, maybe 180, but 170 is a pretty good indicator to start off with. Okay, I like to grease my trays before I start. I just think it's a lot easier. So what I've done is I've just literally taken some butter and put it on, um, put this baking paper and then just put some butter on it, which we will then use to put the mixture on. Okay, so the first step in this very simple recipe is we're taking our rolled oats with our wholemeal flour and our sugar. So we're just gonna mix all the dry ingredients. Okay. 
Okay, now for step number two, we're going to take our 125 grams of butter and we're going to put them in the pan to melt. So put your butter in, let it melt. Now we're going to pour in the golden syrup until it dissolves. And as soon as it's dissolved and it's just all into a liquidy consistency, we're going to turn that off and remove it from the heat. We're now going to take some boiling water and we need two tablespoons mixed in with our bicarbonate. So let's just mix that in. Okay, so we've mixed our bicarbonate of soda with the boiling water and we're now going to put it in to our pan mixture. As you can see, that is frothing up and we're just going to mix that up. Now that's exactly what you want. You want it to rise because it should be reacting with the bicarbonate of soda. So now we're going to take our butter mixture and put it in with the dry ingredients. That just look at the color of that. We're now going to pour that into our dry ingredients. Look at that. That is like golden goodness right there. It smells delicious. Okay, and you, we're just going to stir that until it's really, really well mixed. Okay. So as you can see, it's starting to look that beautiful golden color. Now this mixture should make us about 24 to 36 cookies. I guess it depends on how, how big or small you actually make the biscuits. But let's see how we go. So we've now got our Anzac biscuit recipe ready to go. So it's never going to be quite binding the way you would have a cake mixture or any other kind of biscuit mixture because of the rolled oats in there. But what's going to happen as we take a dessert spoon or which is just slightly smaller than a tablespoon, we're going to roll them into balls in our hands. So we're going to press it into a ball. Okay. We're going to lay it on our tray. Now you can do this in several ways, but I'm going to use just the back of a measuring cup and we're going to press that flat. And it doesn't matter that it's not absolutely perfect. And that's going to be our cookies. So let's go through and do a few. You know, it's really interesting with um, certain recipes. I always wonder, like, who would have thought to put rolled oats with flour and butter and golden syrup? I don't know. I don't know if I would have ever thought of that combination. But it's absolutely delicious. So whoever thought of it, thank you so much. I mean, after 100 years or more of these biscuits, we're still eating them. I just think... I just, I always wonder, like, as I'm making this now, what some of the women who made these for, you know, their loved ones on, you know, on the war front would have been feeling. It might have been just that moment of happiness for them, you know, in between letters. I mean, it took months and months. I mean, these would have taken three, four months to get to, you know, to their sons or husbands or brothers. It's pretty fascinating. I think the world's changed a lot. They probably wouldn't have been able to get butter from the store either. I'm sure a lot of them had to still hand churn their butter. So we're very blessed, very blessed to live in this wonderful country. Okay, so I have put in my beautiful Anzac biscuits on the tray. I've made 16 thus far with only, I've still got half a batch left. I'm gonna put them in the oven for about 15 minutes. This is a batch I did earlier and I'm just going to put them down here to cool down. Now the oven that I'm using is super, super strong. So they were in there for less than 15 minutes, but they've kind of already crisped up a little bit. So you need to be careful. I mean, that's, that is the perfect color that you want, that golden color. It is a little bit crispier there, but it's that consistency that you want. Now they look and smell delicious. The best thing is, is that they're so easy to make. They're so, I mean, everybody loves Anzac biscuits. Kids love them. And basically, hey, I haven't, 
As you can see, my crew are very, very professional. They're just like, they're supposed to wait. You're supposed to wait until I finish. But they are delicious. And look, next time you go, it's Anzac. Make these for Anzac Day. They're such a beautiful and special gift. And you know what? They don't take a lot of time. Put some in a tea towel, take them over to your friend's place and put the kettle on. I know I'm about to go and have some of these biscuits with some Billy tea, which I might do in another episode. We'll, we'll, I'll have a think about it. And I hope you enjoy it. Please try to go to the dawn service and to remember Anzac Day. It is a really special day in our history and I hope you enjoy the story behind this national treat. Remember, like, share and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye! Oh, 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 oh,